Hello and welcome back to Gloucester Salvation Army. It's been a while since I've sat in this room and uh, spoken to you all, but a few days ago we passed 200 subscribers to this YouTube channel. Now some of those people meet with us every week at Gloucester Salvation Army. Some of you are in your homes and watching and some of you are part of the, uh, the worshipping community from around the country, around the world even and you are still very much part of our online community. On Sunday the 27th of November 2022, it marks 143 years since the Salvation Army started here in Gloucester. And to mark that event, we are inviting you all to send in a message of greeting or encouragement to us here at gloucester at salvationarmy.org.uk. If you could please submit that by Friday the 25th of November, that will be really helpful and we can include your greetings in our meeting on that day. We're going to meet in person. You're welcome to come along to Eastgate Street, but we know that some of you, that's impossible. And if you've not yet subscribed, then please do so. May God bless you. And we hand over now to our hall on Eastgate Street for this morning's worship. Well, good morning. good morning and welcome to you all. I'm glad you've all managed to be here. And now I want to get this right. Have I got the children of the primary to thank for the poppies at the front? Thank you very much for all your hard work. Were you helping Freya and Isabel? Yes, thank you. They are lovely. So thank you for, and Caroline, thank you for all your hard work in organising them to do that. We're going to commence with singing song 1010. That is 1010. Peace in our time, O Lord. The words are up on the screen. I'm very grateful to Major Anne for her accompaniment this morning. Um, we've got four verses. Let's rise and sing these words through together. Thank you.
Thank you. Those last two lines, how we make that our prayer, come now and dwell within the hearts of all men everywhere. I don't know how you approach a day like today, what your feelings are. Many of you can remember back, sorry, I'm not going to, I'm going to make you feel old, to the, to the days in the aftermath of the Second World War and how it affected your lives and your families at that time. Others of us have to rely on what we hear, what we learn, the stories that are passed down. It was only during lockdown, doing a bit of family research into my maternal grandmother's family, which I never had any knowledge of, that I found that I had a relative who died in the First World War, and his son died as a prisoner in the Far East in the Second World War. My great uncle and uh, my mum's cousin. And I found it quite sobering. I, I thought up to that time I had, my family had no involvement. Um, my grandfather on my mother's side had died by that time. My grandfather on my father's side worked on the railways and so wasn't called up. But yet, we probably have family members that we can call to mind or stories that we've heard of people who were involved. And we pray for peace. And yet we look at the world and we see all that is going on. So let's turn to song 1001. Help us build a loving world, for we can each do our part a loving world, a caring world, a sharing world, a peaceful world, a happy world. And then after we've sung these verses through, I wonder if there is somebody who would pray on behalf of us all this morning that we may play our part to make our world a better place. We can't rely solely on the, the leaders and those in positions of authority. We play our part too.
this very ordained. We thank you that the people, our forebears, put their duty before their rights so that we could enjoy our rights now. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we are all here together, especially us today. We've had a long struggle to get here, and you have been with us and sustained us all the way. We thank you, Lord, that you want the best for us. Help us to seek what you want for us, which is the best for us. Bless us as we gather here this morning, and we think of the band, and we think of those who can't come this morning, and we realize Lord, how privileged we are. And we thank you for that. And we ask you to bless this meeting this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And let's all join in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And amen. And Major Lorna is going to bring to us our Bible reading. Our Bible reading this morning is a very familiar passage of scripture, but it's a very important one because it's one that reminds us that Jesus took time to teach people about the way we should live. And this morning from Matthew chapter 5, the first 12 verses, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, sorry, chapter 5, and the first 12 verses. Now, when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For, in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God bless his word to us this morning. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. There is a video which I'm hoping is going to work, and it's a band arrangement of the song, Make Me a Channel of your peace, which follows on from our Bible reading.
So sad, isn't it? Pictures from our world today, and yet glimpses there of what the Salvation Army, particularly in Eastern Europe, are doing and are trying to do for those who are affected by war. I thought perhaps it would be good, before we come to our, our act of remembrance, I don't know how closely any of you ever look at the war memorial in the front entrance hall. I thought it would be good just to share the names that are on there from the First World War. I don't know if any of these names still have family connected to the Corps in any way, but they're in, the names are in alphabetical order. So we have Private M.A. Hamlet, who was killed in France in 1918. We have Private J. Hutchinson, who was killed in France in 1917. We have Gunner G.D. Johnson, who drowned in Italy in May 1917. Abel Seaman W.T. Lewis, who died of wounds July 1918. And Private J.C. Sermon, killed in France July 1916. And then we also have our friend here, I forgot to check the name. Um, Nichols. John Nichols. Is that connected to Sue and that? Do we know? Don't know. Right, different family. But we remember people from this core, well, they wouldn't have left from this building because this building wasn't standing at that time. But people who went out from this core to serve their country, willing, if necessary, to give their, and they did, give their lives in sacrifice that we might have the freedom that we enjoy today. So as the clock ticks round to 11 o'clock, let's turn to song 47, a song so associated with today. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. If you're able, let's stand to sing. We've got six verses. I hope you're in good voice. We will sing them through before we come to our act of remembrance. Thank you.
as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. And we salute the memory of all those who went from this place to fight, particularly for those who gave their lives in sacrifice. Thank you. Amen. Now I believe Caroline has some activity for the youngsters, is that correct? So if you want to leave, thank you for your lovely observant of that, observance of that two minute silence.
and thank you again for your beautiful poppies at the front of the hall. We're going to sing together again song 169. Song 169. <clears throat> which reminds us of Christ's sacrifice made for each one of us. Here is love, vast as the ocean. If you're happy to remain seated, that's fine by me. Thank you. In September this year, we were up in Norfolk for a family wedding and took some holiday while we were up there. And we went into the city of Norwich. And I always feel Norwich is a special place because it was there that my mum did her nursing training. And we were at the cathedral and a particular heroine of my mum was Edith Cavill, who is buried at Norwich Cathedral. So I had to go and see where her grave was and pay my respects. And then I remembered that on the bookshelf at home I had a biography of Edith Cavill that I'd had for some years and had never as yet got round to reading. Well, I've just finished it. The book was entitled Faith Before the Firing Squad by Catherine Butcher. And you may be aware of something of the story of Edith Cavill. She was a British nurse, shot by a German firing squad for helping Allied soldiers escape from German-occupied Belgium. Edith had gone to Belgium in 1907 to establish a nurse's training school and a hospital to do for Belgium what Florence Nightingale had done for British nursing many years earlier. She refused to return home at the outbreak of war, though many of the nurses she was working with and training did return to their respective homes. And so she found herself in Brussels when Belgium was invaded. She was prepared to receive the wounded in the nurses' training hospital and at another hospital that she had established. She cared for two British soldiers injured at the Battle of Mons and helped them escape across the border into neutral Holland. And this was the beginning of her work with the Belgian resistance movement. From the start, for, for, for a number of weeks, people were coming um, as they could and she was helping those that she could. But from the start of November 1914, each week, a wounded French soldier who had been treated at a field hospital arrived to stay with Edith for a couple of days before a guide was found to escort them across the Dutch frontier. Obviously, she wasn't doing this on her own. There were other people involved. But as more and more escaping Allied soldiers passed through the training hospital, Edith faced the growing risks. 
From mid-June 1915, the hospital was searched almost every week, and each time escaping soldiers were hidden or helped to get out. Edith knew she was under suspicion, but when told that there were more escaping soldiers in hiding and waiting to cross the border, she was firm. Then we cannot stop, because if a single one of these men were taken and shot, that would be our fault. What was it Jesus said in John chapter 15? The, the Passion Translation says this, For the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices their life for their friends. The training hospital was no longer an adequate hiding place, so a network of safe houses was set up. But the net continued to close in. And in August, Edith was arrested, August 1915. She was charged with helping Belgians, French and English men of military, to es es of military age to escape and then be able to return to the front line to help fight against the Germans. At a trial, she admitted to helping about 200 men, but it's reckoned that the number was likely to have been at least 1,000. Many were grateful for the sacrifice of Edith Cavill. History reveals that she did not face a fair trial, but e and Edith knew that what she was charged with was punishable by death, but that hadn't stopped her. She was duly found guilty and sentenced to death. There was a slim hope that a woman would not be, shut, be shot, but it was in vain. When the priest who shared with com communion with Edith before her execution said, we shall always remember you as a heroine and a martyr, she replied, don't think of me like that. Think of me only as a nurse who tried to do her duty. How about us as Christian people doing our duty we don't have to be heroic. We may not be called to martyrdom. But are we prepared to do our duty, even if it puts our lives at risk? Edith Cavill died on the 12th of October, 1915, aged 49. After the war ended, her body was brought back to England. She was given a funeral service at Westminster Abbey and then she was taken to be buried at Norwich Cathedral in her home county of Norfolk. The Bishop of Durham at the time said she should never be forgotten for her faith in Jesus, her courage in the face of death, love expressed in practical selfless service to friend and foe alike, and her peace flowing from her confidence that because of Jesus, death need not be the end. She knew the future that awaited her in heaven with her Lord. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. How can we bring peace to our world? We seem small and uh, not capable of doing a great deal. We couldn't face the leaders of those warring countries, of those who seek to hurt and to maim. But yet peace starts within each one of us. We cannot wholly lay the responsibility with the leaders of our countries or the, with those who have been appointed or elected to do a particular job. When we have inner peace, we can be at peace with those around us. What was it the song said? When let there be peace on earth, 
and let it begin with me. Do we have peace flowing from our confidence in Jesus, knowing that he guides and directs us if we submit to him? His Holy Spirit works within us to rid us of any bitterness or hatred, to help us see the best in others, whether they are people we see eye to eye with or not. To a life of love in action, help us rise and pledge our word. May that be our intention. We didn't see the words of the, the band piece, make me a channel of your blessing. Some of you may have been singing along quietly with it, but we pray that the Lord will make us channels of his peace. A peace that remains strong and steady despite the chaos and the storms that may be raging around. A peace that is God's presence and his promise to each one of us. In John chapter 14, Jesus said to the disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace Jesus gives it can't be earned, it's a gift that he gives and a gift that the world cannot give. So let his peace dwell in us richly so that we may be recognised as children of God because we are peacemakers living in peace with all people. And let us continue to pray that as peace grows within our lives, there may be peace in our troubled world. Arch Wiggins wrote the words, I would bring peace to lives now torn asunder, ease aching hearts with words that soothe and heal. I would bring peace when breaking like the thunder men rise in war and hatred feel. Peacemaker Lord, now I am stirred to wonder. Oh, take me and my calling seal. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you for that gift of peace that is given to us. Peace that reigns in our hearts and lives despite what may be going on around us. Peace that can begin in our lives and spread out into our world. We pray, Lord, once again for peace in our world. But we know for that to become a possibility, we have to live at peace with mankind, with those around us, those that we may not see eye to eye with, those we may not agree with. But let us live in peace. And as was said by one man, teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward save that of knowing that we do thy will. Amen. 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 Let's turn to Song 1000 in our songbook. The songsters have prepared a piece for our meeting this morning, um, but we will use that as a benediction after we have sung through these words. Song 1000, for the healing of the nations, 
Lord, we pray with one accord. We're using the tune of Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. So if you're not so familiar with the words, at least you are familiar with the tune. So let's rise together and sing. Thank you.
Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. May the master of peace himself give you the gift of getting along with each other at all times in all ways. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen.